Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Refunction by developer Dominique Grishafer uh, with supporting additional credits listed below on the title screen. This is a first person stealth platformer with some exploration and speedrun elements and was created over the span of three months and released for free. This is actually a really, really polished and very beautiful Unreal Engine 4 game and I think you'll probably get some of the impressions even just from the genres I just referenced a second ago. Uh, this has a lot to do with uh, sort of being an homage to the idea of games like Mirror's Edge. Uh, you know, we've got that stark white background, we've got like a sort of undefined cityscape, possibly oppressive sci-fi themes and uh, big bold lettering, typography, bright colors, offsetting the stark white, you get the idea. Uh, but it's a really, really well done game, and I have to say I have a feeling a lot of people out there are going to absolutely love this. I'm not sure exactly how long it is, but I've played about 20 minutes, and I do have some nitpicky stuff to go through with it, uh, but I think on the whole, like, this is really, really good. So why don't we jump into the settings, I'll show off what's going on here, and I think we'll get right into it after that. So we've got a lot of sliders here, which is great, I have no problems whatsoever with that stuff. Uh, resolution uh, settings, which can be, you know, whatever your monitor supports, uh, full screen or not, V-Sync on or off, textures, sliders, all the way up and down, uh, shadows up and down, effects and the aliasing post-processing, and a field of view slider, which actually can go pretty high. I think I've actually found where it seems to be the sweet spot for me. Anything beyond this point seems to start to look a little bit like a fisheye lens. Some people are up for that, some people aren't. Uh, it's really just personal preference. So I'm just going to hit back on that, and we'll go ahead and start a new game, and we'll show off some of the controls here. So, this area... In particular, not really very threatening. We can actually kind of take our time with this if we choose to, uh, but for the sake of the game, well, you want to actually be kind of in a hurry because you actually are timed as you go from one point to another. Uh, but I don't want to actually rush us here just because, well, it's kind of pretty. I want to take in the sights and I want to show you the controls. So let's walk around. Uh, we do have inherent footsteps and we get some momentum. Things start to go a little bit faster. And then if we hit shift, we can actually slide under things, and it actually is a pretty nice tactile feeling uh, when you do that slide. So you'll notice these little discs everywhere. We can actually step on these. They change color. Go, or they're actually sort of more like buttons, aren't they? As you push them down, uh, you can actually just transform those to white. And you'll notice I just did a move where we could just uh, basically vault up the side of an edge. It doesn't have quite all the moves uh, that Mirror's Edge does. You can't really do wall runs in the same way, but you can jump up edges, and you can slide, and you can actually look left and right with Q and E. And the controls actually feel quite intuitive. I would say the only complaint I really have with the controls uh, is just that I kind of feel a little bit slow most of the time. And I know this is very momentum-based, and you want to kind of keep your speed up to get the most out of the situation. But in a lot of the cases, you're doing a lot of tight corners and things. And, well, I didn't have much luck with doing that, despite trying my best. And I must say, I'm probably not the very best person to show off a game like this because I'm not fantastic at them. I definitely appreciate them, and I definitely have fun with them. Uh, but in cases like this, I think probably somebody who really specializes in just really being good at, you know, running and stealth and uh, playing hide-and-seek with stuff, well, you'll see in a little bit. So anyway, you'll probably notice this orange banner shot up into the sky, and again, sort of, I hate to beat this into the ground, but sort of like Mirror's Edge, we've got a bright color uh, offset by the stark white that gives you the idea that maybe you want to head over in this direction. Uh, so let's slide through this vent, and we get this little cube here, which is actually very pretty to look at. It seems to be glowing with some sort of orange embers. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab that with left click, and we can actually drop it with left click or throw it with right click. And if you throw it, you'll notice it actually emits some sort of a tone uh, and an area of effect sort of, you know, radiating circle comes out of that. And there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that as we get to the next area. Also, just want to highlight, like, look how pretty that shadow is. That is really well diffused. There's some really nice metallic stuff going on with this pipe. We've got uh, bloom on the lighting. Like, all the effects uh, that you can see going on here with Unreal Engine 4 absolutely stunning. And I just, I love that this is going to become the new norm for where we're going with games. Uh, it's really, really pretty. So we're going to take this, and we're going to drop it into this little field here. And you'll notice that kind of fizzles, and the cube dies out in color, and now all of a sudden the elevator's open, so we can actually head on to the next area. So I have to say, I got a little bit of a false impression from this tutorial area. I was thinking that going through here, and that's your time, of course. I was thinking that this is going to be sort of a primarily platforming-oriented challenge and that basically a lot of the skill that's going to come to this is going to be about really perfecting your ability to run through things 
and try and find the best paths or, you know, sort of something like a 10 second ninja or something like that. But actually, I was pretty mistaken. Uh, as we get to the second area, you'll notice we've got what appears to be a very large, wide open expanse. Uh, and going in many directions with kind of very little to guide our view other than there's like a little hit of orange over there in the distance. And there's actually robot guards literally everywhere, like everywhere. There will be times when there'll be like four or five of them on screen at the same time. And these guys are one-shot kills. Uh, so if you get shot by them, you're dead. Uh, and they actually will track you very, very accurately most of the time. So if you get seen by one, you'll hear a little blip go off. And then you need to run for your life and try and get out of their line of sight, otherwise they're going to hit you with a railgun. You get about four seconds or so, and you'll hear it charging up. It's kind of terrifying, actually. Uh, so we still want to try and hit all the buttons, of course. And we want to try and stay out of their viewpoint as much as possible. Uh, and here we go. Uh, this one will probably track me around this corner. Oh, no, I got very lucky, and it didn't seem to do that. Um, but yeah, I'll be kind of trying to balance my commentary here and not get shot. Yeah, there we go. It's not going to take long. Uh, so like I said, the AI tracks you pretty well. There's a little bit of, like, diversity in how the AIs tend to approach you. Some of them seem to be more oriented towards patrolling. Some of them seem to be more oriented towards aggressively holding an area. Uh, specifically this one I have in mind, considering there's actually one of those important cubes over there in the corner. Uh, if you get near this dude, he's going to track you down and pretty much just shoot you to death every time. Uh, there are some other things, though, that we can try to do to distract them, and as you've probably noticed here, this orange button has reactivated. So, basically, if I want to trigger that, I need to trigger it and then stay alive. Uh, very important that I do. Did I actually hit it? Yeah, I think I did. So, I picked up this little cube, and it's not one of the ones that we could use as a key, but I can throw it and sort of use it as a distraction decoy, because uh, it will emit that little arc that you saw before with the prior cube. And the idea of that being that all of the enemies that see it or are activated by it will actually flock toward it and thereby get out of your way. Uh, so that's, well, that's the idea anyway. In practice, it feels like a lot of the time it doesn't seem to work, but it also might be because there's too many things impinging their line of sight. Uh, I might just need a lot of practice with how to effectively navigate. You don't have any anything for defense at all. Like, there's no... Uh, navigating around these guys generally. If they see you, they're probably going to shoot you. Uh, you can try and slide under them to sometimes confuse the AI, but it doesn't usually work. Although there's been times when I've been able to kind of exploit them by sliding over and over again, and sometimes if you uh, do it just right, I guess something about you changing from standing to sliding position seems to confuse them a little bit. I don't know. Uh, so I don't really know what to do here. I think I'm going to go back up and try and do a little bit of hide-and-seek now. Uh, I think it's safe in this direction for the moment. Oh, well, there's not even any buttons over here, so I don't really know why I'm troubling myself going over in this direction. Uh, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to fall into these grooves, which is a little bit frustrating, too, because you need to be quick, and you only get a few seconds margin of error. If you screw up, they're going to shoot you. Uh, where did the last one go? Okay, I think we're actually clear over here. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to be overly negative on this game. As much as it can be frustrating at times... It's actually a really well-executed premise, and I just don't think, again, that I'm necessarily the one that's right to show this off to its fullest extent. Uh, I think somebody out there should go ahead and do a full play of this and do it really well and show off how quickly they can navigate this environment, because I think it could look really, really cool uh, once you get in the flow and the momentum starts going and, you know, all the uh, enemies are not able to track you effectively. I think that could be really fun. Uh, I'm a little sad that there's no wall run maneuver, just because I think that would really open up the movement possibilities here. Uh, I mean, unless there is, and I'm just not able to execute it, but I did look in the readme. I didn't see any information about that specifically. So I'm trying to stick to going through tunnels right now. We're, oh, on the other side of that. Okay, so going down. I think we've got another distraction cube there. And more vents. Okay, maybe we'll go in here and just try and trigger that vent from the other side. Or try and trigger this button, rather. Once that's passed. Perfect. Now, if I can, I'm going to try and make my way back and see if I can get to another uh, checkpoint. Because I want to see if they actually will lock in your progress then if you checkpoint again. I assume it would. And you can actually take your time and hit the checkpoints in any order you want over and over again. So I guess every time uh, you make progress, your ideal move would be to try and hit the next checkpoint 
Or, you know, if you're feeling particularly cheeky and fancy, maybe you could uh, just avoid them entirely and play it a little bit like Shovel Knight or something. That's a, a platform, by the way, not a button, in case you didn't know. Uh, okay, this guy, they can shoot you in the vents, by the way, so I'm still not safe just because I'm in here. This is not like Metal Gear Solid, uh, where I believe once you're out of, you know, typical standing vision, like you're pretty much just safe. Where's the next checkpoint? I think there's one coming up on the right somewhere. Oh, see it? There's an orb over in the distance, so I've got to make my way over in that direction. I was really hoping, though, that, like, the first few levels would be a little bit... Well, again, I don't know really how uh, the scope of this game really works, but I was hoping there would be more to do with the platforming and speedrunning and jumping uh, navigational type stuff than just avoiding so many of these patrolling units. Uh, again, I think there's a lot of people that are super into that, but my personal play style would be more just to see how well I could navigate running and jumping across, like, thin chasms and or over things and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And I wish there was more to do with that, actually, in your avoidance, other than mostly going into these, like, little vent cover areas, because I feel like games have had enough vents, although I think that they are particularly useful in this particular context. I don't know how to get this guy out of my way. I feel like I want to throw this... Uh, distraction cube at him somehow, but I don't know what the best way to approach that is. Where, whenever I peek my head out, it feels like he's uh, pretty much just going to be straight looking up at me. Maybe if I... Oh yeah, maybe they won't actually see me if I do that. That's good. I'll try and... St oh god. That's bad news. Uh, I lost the... I lost the checkpoint. I don't know where it is anymore. I got a little turned around from all this running and jumping. Um, I'm going to try and grab a visual again if possible. I have stayed alive longer than I usually do, though, which is great for me. Oh, there's a button right there. Oh, crap. Get in there. Oh, that's such garbage. I was out of the way. They're so unforgiving. I I just really wish there was a little bit more uh, tutorialization before we jump right into this full-blown crazy mode. Uh, because basically what just happened is I lost all of the progress that I just made there because I couldn't make it to a checkpoint. And I guess that's, you know, totally fair. I mean, this is sort of more of a hardcore game. Uh, it's billed as being challenging, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. It's just me that's bad. So it's not like I can take that out on the developer. I just wish we eased into it again more than that. Uh, okay, wait, wait, don't... I mean, it is easy enough to fool these guys, but I think one of the things that's really key here that doesn't necessarily happen is if I'm running up to them, I just wish I could slide underneath them, uh, and you just can't at all. Like... The distance that they hover off the ground should definitely be more than enough for you to be able to slide under. Uh, but that just doesn't happen. And I think it would really change the dynamic, too, when they're actually chasing you like crazy to be able to just jump and slide right under them. Uh, especially with regard to when you're trying to get to a specific object like this one over here. The other thing is you'd think maybe I could just run in there, grab that, and dive off the wall. Uh, but nope, this guy actually, he'll deactivate your ability to grab the cube. And I'll show you what happens if I do that. Alright, see, so yeah, I do... Yep. It'll turn gray for a second, and then you can't can actually pick it up. So, uh, I guess just sort of prevent you from cheesing it, which is fine. But also, you know, again, a little frustrating, just because I feel like I've already figured out how to exploit you. Why can't I do it well? You know, you've kind of built in a countermeasure for that, I suppose. You're way ahead of me, developer. Alright, we're... Okay, so we've got a button down here. We've got vents here. That's straight. Oh my goodness, I'm actually pretty surprised they didn't get me. I also was expecting more bite-sized levels than this. I didn't figure it would be quite this sprawling. Uh, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think I like it, but at the same time, again, I feel like it could have been doled out over several areas instead of just throwing you right into it. Then again, for people who want to just get into the game, like I guess there's nothing wrong with taking it this way. All right, I threw the distraction cube. I don't know if it actually... Oh, jeez. All right, well, now I know it didn't actually help. They're speedy, too. I feel like their speed versus my speed is also a little bit crazy because at full run, I kind of still feel like I'm tiptoeing around a little bit, which is kind of against the whole point, I thought. I'm trying to get these skillful dodges in, but, like, yeah, well... I actually did pull it off there, so I guess I can't complain. There are plenty of things that you can hide behind. It's just about if you have the speed and momentum to be able to reach them in time. Uh, and I think turning around full stop is not exactly going to help me or do me any favors in that case. Uh, sliding, absolutely critical for your success in this. 
Uh, I've totally lost where all the buttons are. Let's jump on this pipe and see if that helps me out at all. Where? Oh, there's another orange cube over there, and there's a checkpoint on the left. Where am I safe? Okay, I could probably jump up to here. I also kind of wish you could go off the rails a little bit and try and maybe get up onto some of these white cubes on the sides, but it doesn't really feel like you can do that. Uh, they kind of block you out from touching those areas, and there was an area in the very first room where it totally looked like you could make that happen, but it just kind of doesn't let you. So there's probably invisible walls involved in that. And you'll feel... I hope you'll pardon my sort of meandering narrative here just because... or narration because I'm kind of really engrossed in the game. Like, I want to do a good job at hiding from these guys, but at the same time, I want to also say some interesting things about it. Uh, but it's a little hard to keep up a commentary and also watch out for these. Because you do have to be vigilant. Like, they are on top of you every second. Um, now we can use this to get up here. I think I'm forgetting... Oh, get the distraction cube. Oh god, I don't know where he is. Oh, I think I got out somehow. I got out. How did I get out? I don't even know. Oh, uh, crap. This could be bad. Uh, get to the vent. I don't actually know what their paths are or anything. They kind of turn around arbitrarily at times, I think. Which certainly messes with you if you're trying to be super stealthy, solid snake mode. Um, oh, God. I need some active camo, guys. Just help me blend into these beige walls everywhere, or whatever these are, cream, white walls, I don't know. Um, distraction cube, I'm thinking about throwing it, but I don't know where. There's like a million guys in every direction. I have to say, too, the enemy design reminds me a little bit of the portal turrets. I don't know if it's just me, but... Uh, am I safe? I think I'm actually safe right here. Uh, up. No, not so much. Not... Oh, God, it turned around the edge. See, it's not fair when they can fly over the edge like that and shoot down at you. Ugh. I'm motivated to want to finish this, or at least get through this level, because I just feel like it's embarrassing that I can't. But at the same time, it's like I need some practice, and I need to just take it a little at a time, try and make some progress. Oh, there's so many enemies! God. Totally screwed there. I don't even know what I could have said about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, I think that's going to be about all I want to say on Refunction. It's really cool. It's really good. Just maybe I'm not the best at it, and I hope you'll forgive me in the comments, or at least be a little forgiving of me in the comments. Uh, but I definitely welcome you guys to go check this out. Go give it a download. It's totally free. Uh, you can see how it runs also. I, since there's so many sliders, like being that it's on UE4, I would say like at first maybe be apprehensive, but it seems like you can really tweak it a lot to try and get what you need out of for uh, performance-wise. So, you know, go nuts. Give it a download. Let me know what you think. Uh, tell me if you can beat this or if you've found some great way to exploit the AI or something like that. Oh, we've come full circle. I'm actually back to the beginning. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's going to be pretty much it for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a like if you did. It definitely helps me out and continues the series going with some positive momentum. And be sure to come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. Links for the games in the description. I hope you enjoyed everything, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Have a fantastic night. I'll talk to you all later.